the documentary Hummingbirds, Magic in the Air, two films about our endangered oceans and our threatened forests, there is plenty of variety at the Environmental Film Festival. But a special focus this year is the Energy Film Series, a diverse collection of international documentaries about our quest for energy and the challenge that poses to our fragile environment. The winner of the festival's special award for artistry in film is Swiss director Mark Wolfensberger's Oil Rocks, City Above the Sea, a portrait of the first and largest offshore oil drilling platform ever built. The director and co-founder of the festival, Flo Stone, says the unique Soviet-era oil city built in 1949 provides a compelling subject for this exceptional film. It's about a huge city built by Stalin in the Caspian Sea that is still functioning with nine-story buildings, acres of uh, oil rigs and buildings and uh, beautifully filmed and interviews many people and really uh, utilizes historic footage. The oil industry is the subject of several other films. The Pipe tells the unsettling story of how an oil pipeline built near a pristine stretch of Irish coastline brings dramatic change to the lives of local farmers and fishermen. And yet the festival's 150 awesome. film include not only documentaries but also animated archival and experimental films. And while they represent the work of artists from 40 countries, there are some gaps. I wish we had more films from Africa. We have films about Africa, but I wish we had more African films in the festival. And I think we'll be looking for that next year. One noteworthy film from the continent is White Lion. Ow! The South African feature documentary by director Michael Swan is in tune with the worldwide movement to save endangered big cats. It tells the story of a rare white lion, a messenger of the gods in African legend, who faces a challenge greater than the harsh African wilderness. Trophy hunters who value the lion's unique skin far more than they do his legendary mission. Another highlight of the festival is a powerful Swedish movie, Submission, by director Stephen Jarl. The film examines some of the more than 100,000 chemicals that we routinely encounter, some on a daily basis. In this single tomato, Orner found 12 different pesticides. And in this chili pepper, no less than 29. The film features interviews with scientists from around the world, like writer and biologist Stephen Edman. We sit the poem Ticking the Bomb. We are sitting on a ticking bomb. Since the Second World War, our use of chemicals has skyrocketed from 1 million tons per year then to 500 million tons now. For Submission, writer and director Stephen Jarl, his film was a personal journey also. As he researched the topic and studied industrial chemicals and their known toxicity, he began to worry about his own health. He had tests run on his blood and later on on the blood of a pregnant actress friend. Speaking to VOA by phone, Charles says the movie has been popular around the world. He says that after it was shown in Sweden, the Swedish government announced it was setting up a four-year program to reduce chemicals in relation to children and newborn. 300 chemicals are in newborn babies the day they are born. They are pre-polluted. And that's awful. 15% of uh, kids in school nowadays have neurological diseases. On a lighter note, the documentary A Community of Gardeners celebrates Washington's suburban community gardens. Producer Cynthia Khabib says the gardens not only provide fresh products, they also serve as places of peace and healing, outdoor classroom for children, and for many immigrants as a way to remember their homeland. There is a community gardening renaissance throughout the United States. In Washington, D.C. and beyond, there are huge waiting lists for people who want to have a community garden plot. Last year, more than 26,000 people attended the D.C. Environmental Film Festival during its two-week run, taking in not just the movies, but also lectures by renowned scientists and discussions with filmmakers. 
With raising public concerns about climate change and the environment, festival planners are hoping for an even bigger turnout this year. This is Sulima Palacio, VOA News, Washington. The device needed constant adjustment.